The Appalachian Mountain region has a rich culture of music, art, and dance. These mountains are the birthplace of clogging. Clogging is the North Carolina state dance, and... That dance has changed over the years. And usually people think of the traditional form as what it was when they were growing up. Dance is never static. You need to know your roots in order to do the more modern or up-to-date or contemporary styles. Today, the newer styles have spread beyond this area, but the traditional styles of clogging can still be found in the Appalachian Mountains. Jeff Atkins is both a clogger and a member of the Folk Heritage Committee in Asheville, North Carolina. Our two main functions is to preserve the Mountain Dance and Folk Festival, which is the oldest dance and folk festival in the country. And then we also sponsor this event called Shindig on the Green. One of the goals the Folk Heritage Committee meets by continuing these events is to preserve the more traditional style of clogging, which Jeff is very familiar with. It started off as a freestyle type clogging, which means the dancers can do whatever they want to with their feet as long as they're in time with the music. They dance in square dance formations all together in, in unity. Phil Jameson, a dancer and a professor at Warren Wilson College outside of Asheville, is also familiar with some of the more traditional styles. This includes buck dancing and flat footing. Buck dancing and flat footing are, are basically individual dance forms. By that I mean for a person not necessarily for performance, but just to enjoy the music. They're social dance forms. It's a way to get out and enjoy music with your feet. Professor Jameson has spent a lot of time studying how the dance developed. It has its roots in several different dance forms. Some of the roots are from Scotland, Ireland, England, but there's also some French setting steps that dancing masters taught in the early 1800s that have filtered into the tradition, and there's African-American influence and supposedly some Native American influence as well. Glenn Bannerman, who is also a member of the Folk Heritage Committee and has been clogging for many years, says the dance was also influenced by changes in music at that time. When folks came to this country and beside the fiddle began to put a guitar or a banjo or bass fiddle, the music becomes heavier and folks using the step dance began to go down the heavier step and so a sort of a down dance. It's a way to make rhythm with your feet and enjoy the music and it's a social form, it's not performance. Clogging as it's done on stage is often for performance or for competition. Clogging didn't evolve from a social dance into a performance style until the early 1900s. It wasn't a performance style until the Mountain Dance and Folk Festival started in Asheville in 1928. There used to be a competition at the Mountain Dance and Folk Festival, and they would invite square dance teams from all over. Baskin Lamar Lunsford is the founder of the festival, and he is renowned for preserving music and for dance. At that time, there was no footwork. It was just a smooth gliding step of the square dance that you see, the mountain square dancing. This competition inspired the square dance teams to begin changing their routines in order to win. The team from Maggie Valley called the Soko Gap Dancers, the director was Sam Queen, he had a bunch of good buck dancers or flat footers, and he decided, what if we all do that while we're doing the square dance and take it to the festival? And so they put it in their routine and they brought it to the festival and they were a crowd favorite and they won. So it evolved through the competition of one group trying to outdo the others. The shoes used for clogging also changed during that time period. By the 19, around the 1930s, the music started to be amplified. And at that point, dancers couldn't hear their feet, so they started wearing taps. Although the dancers began to add footwork to their routines, the formations did not change. The choreography was still mostly the big circle square dance figures, but every dancer doing their own thing, but just keeping time with the music with their feet. It wasn't until the late 50s when a group of cloggers began to revolutionize the dance by creating precision clogging. That means every dancer is on the same foot doing the same exact step to the music, along with them the formations together. A person who popularized this newer style of precision clogging was James Kesterson from Hendersonville, and he had a group called the Blue Ridge Mountain Dancers. They discovered that if you open up a line facing the audience, and if you synchronized your footwork, it had a big impact on the audience and the judges. Glenn Bannerman says the reason the footwork could not develop in the past was partly because of the square dance formations. 
When you're figure dancing, you're doing circle left, you circle right, you're doing grand right and left, you're swinging partners and all. And so consequently, your footwork cannot do but so much. After the formations evolved, clogging was able to develop into a more contemporary dance form. If you're dancing in lines, there are several things that can happen. One is you don't need a partner anymore. So you could have all women or you could have a gender imbalance and it doesn't matter. Over the next few decades, precision clogging began to gain more popularity. By the 1970s, 80s, there were dance studios that started teaching us. It really got away from the traditional square dance figures, the closed formations, into an open line facing the audience. Once dancers began to learn clogging in studios, the music they performed to began to change as well. Some of the teachers realized that some younger kids wanted to dance to the music that got them excited. So they started using country music, pop music, rock and roll, I mean today rap music, techno all kinds of music. The traditional and modern styles of clogging also differ in the beat the steps are done on and the way those steps are executed. Shauna Godwin Hamby practices both styles of clogging. Traditional clogging is typically on the downbeat, but today as clogging has grown more contemporary, it takes more of its roots from tap and it's more on the upbeat. Most of the steps in traditional are done down on the heels, more into the ground, and then with contemporary clogging, it's always up on the balls of the feet or even on the toes. In its transition from a social dance form to a performance style, contemporary clogging has lost touch with many of its Appalachian roots. The competition thing is huge. If you go to one of these competitions, it's phenomenal what they're doing. But if you look at the dancers, majority are young girls wearing sequins or spandex, and you hardly ever hear any fiddle music, let alone bluegrass. Since contemporary clogging has spread beyond the Appalachian region, Bill Jameson has learned of people who both unintentionally and intentionally disassociate the dance from its roots. I've met a lot of kids who don't even know that the fiddle has anything to do with this dance style. To them, it's something totally different. And as I understand it, there are people around the country now who want to even give a different name, who call it power tap. Jeff Atkins says the Folk Heritage Committee is promoting the traditional style of clogging by setting rules for the cloggers who perform at their festival. They ban precision dancing at the festival because there's plenty of other competitions for those dancers to be able to go to and kept the Mountain Dancing Folk Festival more traditional. There's lots of incredible precision modern clogging going on, but what we want to do is preserve the original dance. The Folk Heritage Committee is not the only organization dedicated to preserving the traditional dance. Clogging sanctions today, they're very strict on the traditional, making sure that it sticks to its roots and it sticks to its foundation. You need to know your roots in order to do the more modern or up-to-date or contemporary styles there are today. Dance is never static. It's always evolving. And so consequently, for those that want to do it and get a kick out of it, that's great. But here again, if you're going to say this is tradition, then you got to be true to what you're talking about. I think any time a tradition moves along, there are various stopping places where people get off the train and say, this is what I like, this is the tradition I like, and then it moves on to something more progressive. Most of the dances are contemporary dances, and even when you look at the more traditional style dances, all the dancers dance differently now. They dance with more contemporary flair. In the modern contemporary clogging, there are people all over the country who do it. And even though group clogging started here in Asheville, most people probably don't have a clue about its history. And as I say, some people want to disassociate it from the Appalachian tradition. Despite all this, Bill believes the traditional styles of clogging will be preserved in the Appalachian Mountains. I think it remains connected with the Appalachian region, partly because this is where it originated and it still is promoted in our local heritage. And even though you have these modern forms going out that have disassociated themselves with the Appalachian region, it still has roots here. Clogging has come a long way from the social dance that originated in the Appalachian Mountains, but the traditional styles of the dance are deeply rooted in the heritage of the Appalachian region. As a people in the Appalachian Mountains, it's really important that we remember that and practice that, and I don't think that's ever going to be lost here because it's such an important and dear thing to us that we created this dance. I'm Jessica Parator. 
Thanks for listening.